So I haven't exactly kept it a secret that I love pirates. To your stations, we're under attack. Pull out the cannons. Return fire. Pirates are awesome. The freedom, the general badassery. I love the clothes, I love the artwork, I love the rum. But most of all, I love the ships. Tall ships might have been a pretty nasty place to work in that era, but today they have a romance and charm about them. They take true craftsmanship to build and incredible skill and knowledge to sail. Having been on one and sailed under a 24 hour watch schedule, I can tell you, it's hard work. Heave, two six, heave, two six, heave. But not only are they beautiful and romantic, but there are some really interesting physics principles behind them. Although it would take more than a short video to really unpack the physics of pirate ships, we can still have a go. So the first and most obvious thing to talk about is buoyancy. Any submerged object has an upward force called the buoyant force. It's the force of the water pushing up on the object. For a pirate ship to float, the force of gravity acting down has to be balanced by the buoyant force acting up. Archimedes studied this force and he found that the buoyant force, the size of the buoyant force, is equal to the force of gravity that would act on the amount of water displaced by the boat. Displaced is a similar word to replace. The ship is replacing a certain amount of water and whatever the force of gravity would have been on that water, that is the amount of buoyant force that points up on the pirate ship. So that means that a heavier ship will float lower in the water because it has to displace more water in order to create a buoyant force up that balances its mass. In the film Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, there's a scene where they have to tip over the Black Pearl to return to the land of the living. Don't remember it? Take a look. But how exactly does that work? At what point would a ship tip over? Well, of course, that would depend on the ship. But tall ships are a lot easier to tip over than some boats because they're, well, they're tall. Having so much weight near the top of the ship, from the heavy masts and rigging to the cannons that line the upper decks, that weight higher up definitely makes a tall ship more tippable than a lot of smaller boats. Just like how it's easier to turn something or lift something with a nice long lever. It was also Archimedes, in fact, who said, Give me a lever long enough and I shall move the world. <clears throat> yep, pretty easy. I mean, it's still pretty easy to begin with, to be fair. Okay, but how exactly does it work? What happens when a ship tips? Well, in order for this pirate ship to tip over, say, this way, there has to be a greater torque pulling counterclockwise than there is pulling clockwise. A torque is a figure that represents how much something is being pushed to turn, either clockwise or counterclockwise. It's a force multiplied by the distance to that force, or kind of like a force multiplied by the length of the lever you're using. The force multiplied by the distance to the pivot point. More force means more rotation, more torque. And a bigger lever, a bigger distance, also means more rotation, more torque. So let's look at the pirate ship itself, and let's call this the pivot point. The center of gravity of the ship is the point at which the force of gravity acts, and the center of buoyancy of the ship is the point at which the buoyant force acts. When the pirates in the movie run to one side of the ship, they create a force over here. That just comes from the force of gravity pulling them down and pulling the ship with it. This creates a counterclockwise torque and the ship starts to turn. Unfortunately, by doing that, more water is displaced on the left side of the ship now than the right side and that moves the center of buoyancy to the left. And this movement of the buoyant force to the left creates a clockwise torque. And that clockwise torque counters what they're doing and pulls the ship back upright again. On a truly stable ship, the buoyant force will always pull the ship back upright. So now what do they do? Well, one solution would be to get so many people on that side of the ship that it tips it enough that water starts to come on and increase the force even more, 
causing that side of the ship to sink and making the ship flip. But they really don't have enough weight or people to do that. So they find another solution. They try running back and forth with the rocking of the ship. Since the ship is always rotating one way or the other, they add to that rotation with their torques, making the ship tilt more and more with every oscillation. And once they get the angle big enough, it will start to flood with water and then it really will tip over. The rocking of the pirate ship is kind of like a pendulum or a playground swing. If you push it in the direction of motion, it will oscillate higher and higher with every push. And in fact, at small angles, it is an example of what's called simple harmonic motion, which is the motion that describes things like pendulums and springs. Come to think of it, it's been a really long time since I've been in a playground. Well, I was shaking and sweating like I normally do I walked a long way there just to calm my nerves My heart in the back of my throat played the beat of that song that I was whistling And you were shaking and sweating like I normally do You locked your keys in the car, my heart in the boot I was waiting and pacing up and down on the streets with my hands in my pockets Oh God, we were trapped in gold and steel In the darkness of the evening And the sky was freezing over To the darkest shade of black It played out against the stars That blazed bright for our attention We just stood there and we let... And then there's the rigging of the ship. Hauling rope on a tall ship takes huge strength often many people on the same line. Pull is allowed to take a tension force one way and change the direction of that force. That way when the pirates are hauling the rope across the deck one way, they can be pulling a spar on the mast a completely different way. Pulleys also allow you to reduce the amount of force that you need. You do that by having multiple pulleys. Two pulleys set up like this will reduce the force to a half, although you will have to pull for twice as long. Set up four pulleys like this, and you reduce the force to a quarter, although then you have to pull four times as long. The pirates would use the same amount of total energy, but this would allow them to pull loads that would ordinarily require superhuman strength. And last but not least, cannons. When you fire a cannon, you have to be really precise about your aim. Cannons are an example of projectile motion, and if you point a cannon directly at your target, it will fall under gravity and hit the ocean before it even reaches it. But if you fire a little upwards and get the angle just right, you can get the cannonball to arc and send your foes to Davy Jones's locker. There's a lot more we could talk about. Wind speed, sail angle, gunpowder, the force per unit area of a well-sharpened sword, navigation and the curvature of the earth. Contrary to popular folklore, no navigator aboard a tall ship was foolish enough to think the earth was flat. Their jobs depended on it. You don't want to be sailing across the Atlantic and end up in Antarctica. That would be quite a shock to the system. But putting all that aside for a second, one thing is really clear. To be a pirate, or at least to be a good pirate, you would have to internalize all kinds of physics principles. Maybe you couldn't write those principles down, maybe you couldn't do the math, but you could certainly use physics to your advantage. Until next time, ar matey! I mean, keep questioning. <laughs>